This is a James Poe Artistry Consultant Moment. Making a profit in business is completely all right with me. Hi, perceptive readers, and welcome to this James Poe Artistry Consultant Moment. From time to time, you will hear people talk about uh, something that, <laughs> let's just call it what they say it is. Sometimes it's just a class distinction on this and that. And they will even talk about uh, this person or these persons need to uh, pay their fair share of taxes, unquote. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, you know, I have a tendency to do it around this time of year because, uh, you know, it is tax time, at least in the North American uh, continent. Um, around about this time, people getting their taxes done, the accountants are uh, working long hours from sunrise to uh, sunset. And it's interesting about uh, some of the, uh, the accountants. And see, this is what I'm talking about, enjoying the fruits of your labor. Because I've had opportunities to hear uh, tax accountants uh, uh, talk about how hard they work during this season, you see. And I really am talking about uh, the real, real... Um, um, ones that has expertise, because uh, in other words, you do have different levels of understanding from even people who will do your taxes at times. I'm just telling you like it is. So you have some who will get like a crash course. That's if you go and get your taxes done at some of these places and uh, uh, they'll get like a crash course. Uh, but I tell you what, when you are looking for the legally acceptable or binding loopholes, you see, because they do have tax breaks. I'm just letting you know uh, uh, that it will save you a lot of money and things of this nature. And, I, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but the whole point is you have some persons who may not be as familiar with all those loopholes. And then you have those, I mean, uh, on loyal level, understanding of the tax code, et cetera, et cetera. And they can really, once again, save you money behind really all that money you already put in the economy in the first place. You want to hear that again? They will already save such person's money or even a lot of money from all that money they already put in the economy in the first place. So that's why, you know, when I hear that term at times when people say, well, they need to pay their fair share of tax or whatever, or this millionaire or this billionaire uh, uh, took this uh, loophole or tax break or what have you. And yet at the same time, I'm just telling you, when you look at, okay, now, how much money did they pay their employees? Uh, what was the cost of living? How did inflation affect them? What did they do for philanthropy? What did they do to have a reason to cover the losses? Because remember, we talked about widgets before. We talked about any company, let's say if they were producing um, if. I don't think Apple would mind because this is just a disclaimer. It's not a commercial or anything of this nature. But let's say Apple had so many iPhones that they were able to make every hour. Let's say they were able to make a thousand iPhones an hour because, you know, once they get the production going on or what have you. And yet, let's just face it. Every so many parts, like out of a hundred because, uh, you know, those, I mean, you got the motherboards, you got the processors, you got other stuff that they put on these boards anymore. They, they go inside these phones and the batteries and stuff like that. So let's say uh, that there's still even 100 parts in each phone. Well, they really do have to factor in for every so many 100 parts, there's going to probably be one defective. Now, that may not sound like much, but then imagine when you're putting out a thousand of those phones, you see what I'm saying, an hour, and then this is going on every day, even sometimes around the clock, that adds up 
to not just a few thousand dollars, you see, depending on what the part is uh, for each one of them, because each one of them can be defective. Uh, it's not going to always be the same um, widget or what have you that's defective. That gets into, you see, cost, a high amount of cost of products. So you could end up saying, yeah, I sold, you know, a thousand iPhones this week. Uh, but the thing about it is if you still have those phones, you know, many other phones that hasn't sold yet. And then you got that bin where you keep all the wasted widgets and stuff like that. Well, guess what? The cost still goes up from all the wasted products. But I said all that. I, I probably digress quite a bit. But I mentioned that because, see, these are the things that are given into consideration for the write-offs and the loopholes uh, that these company owners actually get. Uh, you see, uh, and then when you think about from the employees that they pay, uh, the raises and even cost of living, et cetera. So they're already really putting a lot out into the economy that keeps it running. And, I mean, so much so that wouldn't it be a shame that some person, this has happened to some persons, that if some persons were not able to get those loopholes or tax breaks or what have you, then what would happen to their business? Uh, then they may not have that business anymore. And yet, you still can see what was the effect then on the economy. What was the uh, effect on that block that some of these uh, companies used to be on in these neighborhoods that went out of business? What is the effect in a lot of these malls, not only around the country, but around the world where at one time they were booming for about a decade but then because of sales, economy, and then, like I said, you know, it's like they probably had to do more write-offs than what they were doing and making profits or what have you at any given time. What happened to them? Uh, are they ghost town now in some of these places? Where I just wanted to give you the background of what these business owners actually have to contend with. And that's why, again, if you end up hearing some of these, these uh, uh, uh multi-millionaires and billionaires and say, well, you know, they're not even paying no taxes. Oh, just because they only paid maybe uh, several hundred million other than maybe the billions that they were going for some of these places. You see, that's something, as I mentioned before, uh, if you got these legal accountants and persons who got these degrees, which they, you know, they deal with, in these tax write-offs, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, if they can sit up there and show this is the code that this applies to, and if it's right in that code, then guess what? They get to write it off. Now, one other thing that I want to talk about, because I was saying about uh, the profit, that's what I really want to emphasize, because sometimes as well, you see, if the person actually started a business, that's them using their intellectual property. And so let's say that after hours and years of painstaking efforts and and all sorts of other stuff, emotional turmoil or, or what have you, that can go along with starting your own business, that finally that owner ship come in, as the expression goes. So they'll ship come in and now, all of a sudden, where they weren't making anything at all, you see what I'm saying? They were they were eating, uh, what they say, um, um, hand to mouth. That means it's like, okay, as soon as, soon as you get it, it, you only got enough to just eat, but not to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Then guess what? When their ship does come in, and all of a sudden now, they're in abundance, they should not be looked down upon, now should they? No, they really, they really should. And also, it doesn't mean that just because they got an abundance, that it means that even the um, some of the, the employees that work right with them would, should still get the same amount of money just because they're employed. No. If once again, there was already agreement for a certain salary 
and and then also maybe if they wanted to give this person that raise or, or what have you, that is really their choice. Even Jesus said that one time about the workers, you know, who came and who were working in the vineyard. And uh, there were some who came early that morning and they were uh, agreed to a uh, certain day's wage. And then there were some that came in the late afternoon. But guess what? At the end of the day, uh, guess what? Their owner of that vineyard or, or farm or what have you still gave them the same amount. OK, still gave them the same amount. And so some of the people who had already started earlier that morning got upset. See, this is an illustration that Jesus gave. Got upset because it was like, well, you know what? They getting paid the same thing. And here it is. We've been working all day on this or what have you. And so look at the way Jesus responded back to them. See, he basically still made it clear that was under his authority his own jurisdiction and reasonableness, love, and guess what? Goodness, if that's what he wanted to do. You see, he was not shortchanging those persons who came in at the, you know, earlier that day, early in the morning, you see? So the whole point is, it's the same thing as I was talking about with taxes and et cetera, you know, just because someone is wealthy, it doesn't mean that they're not paying their fair share. You see, it does not mean that at all, because on top of that, I want to really emphasize to you that out of all that money that they talks about, talk about person getting taxes and stuff like that. Well, I don't know if you know this or not, or maybe you don't pay too much attention, but the same way even when they're purchasing all those pro, uh, uh, products or widgets for their company. I mean, remember you got, uh, you got toilet paper, uh, or you got uh, cleaning supplies, you got air conditioning and all sorts of stuff, wash machines, all sorts of stuff uh, uh, that when they have their buildings, their company that they're paying for, they're paying the repairmen, et cetera, et cetera. But did you know where well, you, you got to know this? Well, I'm, so maybe I'm talking to the a more the middle school or the high school students now. But here's the point. The same way you go to a store and if you were to buy like a, a, a nice ice cream bar. Remember, the ice cream bar can say one dollar, but really you end up paying what? One dollar and 20 some cents in some cases. And why is that? Because of the taxes. See, so. They are paying their taxes as well all throughout the year just by the products and stuff that they're buying to keep their company running and making a service. You see what I'm saying? Or providing the service. So people are, everybody is really literally paying their fair share. And that's why I think I even um, heard one businessman, a very, um, a successful businessman actually uh, mentioned something about, and this was some time ago, but was mentioning that's why you don't really even need, you know, the payroll tax. And and I and I bet you that was actually contributing uh, what I just mentioned to you to some of his reasoning on the matter. People are paying taxes every time they buy anything, whether it's luxury or even for their business. So everybody's paying their fair share, I'm telling you. Even people who even say, I don't pay taxes. You don't have to pay taxes. He doesn't do anything to go to the store, they're paying taxes. So I just wanted to let you know, it gets you all the same. You're paying your fair share. And then once a year, you see uh, uh, around tax time, then they like to get you really for all this other <laughs> luxury type of stuff where it's not even luxury, but you know. The whole point is this. There are loopholes. Business is so, you know, so function is to make a profit. And there's nothing wrong with that. OK. And uh, so this was a James Poitry. Let me emphasize consultant moment, consultant moment. And you have a wonderful day.